Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? Time for another tutorial from video editing software guy .com. Today we're doing a tutorial on the wizard spell effect in Cyberlink PowerDirector 11 Ultimate. Let's get into it. Alright, you want to be a wizard? You could be one. It doesn't matter if you want to be a young whippersnapper wizard like Harry Potter or you want to be an old fart wizard like Gandalf the Great. This effect will help you get it done. Alright, knuckleheads, skate it popping. First thing you need to do, of course, is you need to bring your clip down into the timeline. So I have my clip down here on the first track. Next thing you want to do is you want to move your playhead or your scrubber to the position right where the individual does the little magic motion of the wand. So that looks pretty good. So what you want to do is once you get it in the position that you want, you want to actually go back three frames from where the playhead is. So you use the button that's called previous frame and you go back one, two, three frames and you need to split your clip there now you need to go ahead and left click on this clip the first part of it because you want to just mess with this clip right now and once again you want to move your playhead to the position where the individual starts the motion or where you want the effect to start now I don't want the effect to start as soon as he starts moving but I do want it to start when it comes on the screen in a specific place that I like so I'm going to hit the next frame button until I get the hand right where I want it. And let's see, I could do this or that. I think I'll go with this spot. Alright, so what I want to do now is split this clip again. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want the effect to only be in this little bitty piece right here. Not here, not here just right here okay <laughs> so in order for me to get this special effect that I'm going to use into this position I need to have some space so I can mess around so I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor right on the timeline here where the numbers are and I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag this out and stretch my timeline out so that I can see each frame and now that itty bitty part is getting bigger. How lovely. Alright, so I got it all big and nasty now. I know that my effect will only be taking place in this little spot. So, I need to bring my effect down. So I want to go to the effect room. And I want to go to visual effects. And I'm going to go all the way down to Spotlight. I'm going to drag Spotlight and I'm going to bring it down onto the Effect Track. Now you can even bring it right on top of the clip and drop it there if you want to. But I'm just going to bring it underneath it this time. I also need to go ahead and make sure that the Spotlight Effect is not on this here. Because right now it's going all the way over this other piece of the video and I don't want it there. So I'm going to click on this clip here and the playhead will go right between the two spots. So now I'm going to click on the spotlight effect and I'm going to split it. I'm going to right click on the second part of the spotlight effect. Go to remove and it's out of here. Now it's time to make this effect come to life. So let's left click on the spotlight effect. And we're going to click on keyframe. Now we want this effect to actually start at the end. We're going to go from we're going to go backwards basically. We're going to move our playhead all the way to the last keyframe, and we're going to keyframe it backwards. And when it plays, it's going to play the other direction. You get what I mean in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the next frame button until the keyframe or to the playhead at the bottom gets to the end okay that means it's at the end now this one doesn't show at the end but it's okay as long as this playhead here shows that it's at the end it's good 
And then we need to click this little arrow next to effect to get the parameters that we can keyframe out. So since we're at the end, we want to make this spotlight actually be right at the end of our wand. We want to make it huge. Right now the spotlight's actually over the whole room and it's showing the spotlight over everything. But we can change that, baby. Alright. First things first. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the position button. I'm going to click on position. And when we do, a little extra little window shows up. A little red dot. The red dot signifies the middle of the effect. So I want to move the red dot right to the end. I'm going to left click on it and drag it right to the end of the wand. Because that's where the spotlight should be coming from. Once we get it where we want to, click OK. Now we got to make this spotlight look beautiful. So we're going to go through all of these and we're going to do different numbers on these. So for the width, I'm going to go with 16. For the height, I'm going to go with 16. I want to make it a nice little round thingy here. Now, the gradient depth, I'm going to change that one to 75. And the brightness, we're going to leave that at 220. And then we're going to change the mean to zero. And now we got a big, gigantic flash right there. And you see everything that we changed now, have the keyframe here at the end that we just created for each one of those parameters. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to step back three frames. So we're going to hit one, two, three. First things first, we need to change the position. Now I'm going to show you something. You can change the position by just clicking on the position button and moving this little red dot right to the end again. But if it was too bright for you, you could actually change the width and the height to 1 to make it even easier to move it to the end. So what I mean by that is if you make if it's hard for you to see where the little dot is in the middle when you click the position button just move the width and the height down to 1 and then it just turns to a little bitty ball that's easier to manage and see and move around. All right? But we don't want our width there. For this position, the next position, we're going to make our width 12. And we're going to make the height 12. Because we're going backwards, remember. So the last key frame it was 16, so it was bigger. But now since we're moving backwards, we're going to make it smaller as we go back. So now the width and the height are 12. The gradient depth, we're going to move that all the way down to 50. Before was at 75. Brightness, we're going to actually move that down to 100 now. And then for our mean, we had it at 0. We're going to move this up to 15. Alright, beautiful. Beautiful. All right, now that we got that keyframe, we got the last set keyframe, we got the other keyframe. Matter of fact, let me do a little something, something here. I want to make sure that this last keyframe brightness stays at 220 because I didn't actually create a keyframe there, but I'm going to now. But as you can see, it didn't change. It stays at 100 now. So I got to make it 220 at the end. So that it stays bright like it's supposed to. Alright, good. So I'm just going to go back to the last keyframe here by clicking on this button here. Alright, so we're at the second keyframe. And we want to go back two more frames. So we're just going to click the previous frame twice. And let's go ahead and go to position. Matter of fact, let's go back one more frame. All right, now let's go to position. So 
then when we need it, click OK. And then we'll change the, all the other parameters again. I'm going to move the width here down to 6. And 6 again. And we'll move the gradient depth down to 40. We'll move the brightness down to let's go to 90. And we'll move the mean down up, of course, because we're going the opposite direction with the mean. Move the mean up to 30. All right. Let's go back some more frames. Let's go back two frames this time. And this time we're going to make the width one. All right, one. Gradient depth. We're going to move that to twenty-five. Brightness. We're going to move that. Down to 75. And mean we're going to keep that at 30. And let's move the position. And get this little bad boy where he's supposed to be. At the end of Mr. Wandy. Click OK. And then we'll go back on we'll the last frame here. So the mean is still at 30. Brightness stays at 75. Gradient depth is at 25. And width and height are at 1. Now let's move the position. This little bad boy at the top of the wand where he's supposed to be. And click OK. Now that we got all of that worked out, last thing we want to do is make sure that we did skip keyframes as we went along, so we're going to go back to each frame now and make sure that this little light ball is right on top of the one. So I'm going to go to the next keyframe or the next frame, and it's still on top of it, so I'm good. I'm going to go to the next frame. Seems to be still on top of it, as a matter of fact. It's not really on top of it, so let's move this where it's supposed to be actually should be up here but I guess I'm a little blind or something all right Click okay now let's go forward to the next frame and we don't have to move anything else because we it's gonna go correctly because of how we went backwards the light is gonna go up real fast to that Next spot, all we really need to do is make sure that the light is on the end of the wand by going to each frame. The first time around, what we were basically doing is making sure that the light was going correctly. Now we're going back and making sure that the light is on the wand through each step. So we can also remember how we talked about moving the light down because I can't tell if it's right on top of it or not right now. So what I'm going to do is just remember that the width and the height are on 6 right now. Changing both to one, and I'm gonna see if it's in place, and it is. So I'm gonna change these back to six. That's what they should be at this keyframe, or at this frame. All right, I'm gonna step forward to the next frame. Once again, I want to look at them, make sure it's where it should be. So I'm going to change these to 1. It's a little bit off. So since it's a little bit off, I'm going to go to position. 
So I'm going to move it where it should be. All right. Now all the keyframes have been worked out. We went ahead and went backwards through to create the lighting how we wanted it to go. And we went back forward through the frames to make sure that the light was at the end of the wand the whole time. We're done. So we're going to go ahead and click this and close that out. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to add the beating effect to make it a little extra jump, a little push, a little bump. So if you go to the effects room and go to special, you have the beating effect here. But you're not going to put it on here. You're going to put it after it to make the scene kind of jump afterwards. So what you want to do is you want to click on the clip afterwards. And you want to step two frames forward and split that clip. You want to drag the beating effect down underneath it. And you also want to click on split to split the beating clip right in that position. And right click on the second part that you created when you split it and remove it. Now what's going to happen is you're going to see the individual come through with the wand. You're going to see the light go up and then you'll see the scene jump from the beating effect so it's going to happen real fast so let's go ahead and bring our timeline back down to size and when we play this you will see the beautiful wizard spell effect that's it the Wizard Spell Effect in Cyberlink Power Director 11 Ultimate. You guys know the routine, right? I shouldn't even have to say it, but you know I'm going to anyway. <laughs> Too bad. You don't like it? Just subscribe, okay? <laughs> Get out of here. Alright, first and foremost, the thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it, comments, you know I like comments, and every time you leave a comment, I'm going to get back to you, alright, if I can't help you, I will point you in the right direction and get you the freaking help you deserve, and last, but definitely not least, my friends, don't you ever forget to subscribe thanks for watching we'll see you again soon